Uh, thank you. Hello, hello. My name is Serge Mayorov. Welcome to the Pipeline Manager Strikes Back. Yeah, it's working. Awesome. So, I was on the last uh, Blender conference, and uh, I had those nice guns. And <laughs> as usual, I'm representing today Blackboard Studios. By the way, yesterday I was in uh, Walibi, so my voice has changed, so I'm really sorry for that. Um, so, um, we had the pleasure to create um, live action videos and 3D animations for some of the biggest brands in the world. And I'm going to talk today about uh, challenges and obstacles we had uh, in various, various uh, projects from Previs to Post and in between. I hope you learned something from this talk and occasionally it's going to be educational. And on to, wait, sorry, sorry. Of course, all the jokes uh, are not working. <laughs> educational. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah, without uh, further ado, let's move on to our latest showreel. Thank you. <clears throat> so the first project that I want to talk about uh, is going to be uh, fast and easy. Uh, Puffy, uh, a, matrix, a mattress company. It's about a turtle on a shoulder. Uh, it's easier to watch the movie than to explain, so let's watch the movie. Six years ago, I went to a magic show in Vegas. The next morning, I wake up with a screaming turtle attached to my shoulder. Kyle! How does it feel? Kyle, 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 Kyle. Well, that's a stupid question. Kyle, Kyle, Kyle. I am so... Kyle. Freaking... Kyle. Tired. So, why did you leave your last job? Kyle. I had to get some sleep. So I tried a puffy mattress that guarantees better sleep or your money back. Puffy comes with a lifetime warranty, delivers straight to your door, and it's made in the US. You know what? It actually worked. Even the turtle's getting some rest. Do I sleep better? Absolutely. Am I happier? Well. I still have a turtle on my shoulder that's gonna ruin every chance I'll have for a normal life. But I sure am glad I got that puffy mattress. It says here your name is Dave. Yes, yes it is. Kyle. Okay. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> So, a little bit about this project. Um, we had a shooting day for less than a day in one location. All the shots that uh, you've seen, they were made in the same place at somebody's home. He used to have uh, productions uh, at his place, so it was really nice to have a shooting day in less than a day. It was really quick and easy. And the second thing is that, that uh, the turtle uh, was an animatronic. Uh, so we got um, this turtle from a company named uh, Anantomorphex. Uh, they've been in the industry for years. They did some crazy jobs for Mass Attack and Men in Black. You should visit their site. They're, they have awesome work. 
So uh, we got the package from them, and we opened it, and we got the turtle. And we had to check that everything works technically, and we had to check that everything works on somebody's shoulder. Okay, so um, uh, the turtle was, as I said, animatronic, and we had to uh, get it back uh, to um, the company. Uh, uh, the turtle as a whole, undamaged, uh, because it's, uh, it's not cheap. So how did we pull this shot? Anyway, um, so let's do it like uh, in CSI. <laughs> <laughs> and zoom in into, into the hidden pixels of this shot. <laughs> I'm going to explain what happened. Um, so we bought this turtle on CG Trader, three and a half bucks, not bad. And we mushed it together in Blender. We sent it to somebody who actually 3D prints stuff. He split uh, the turtle into parts. Uh, it looked like a white, glossy turd. And then he uh, painted it, uh, and now it looked like a brown turd. So anyway, we were happy with the turtle, but the problem that we stumbled upon was that when we tried to dive with the turtle, it jumped back because it's made of plastic. So the easy solution was to make me behind, be behind the actor grab the turtle and die with, dive with him. And because it was made of parts, uh, the head was popping out <laughs> occasionally to the water. Um, but we managed to have the shot. So I want to conclude this project. Um, animatronics are cool. Uh, there is certain magic to animatronics. You know it's a puppy and it's still funny. Um, always have a stunt turtle. And, oh, by the way, uh, this shot of the elevator, it was done in a box in the backyard of the same place. Uh, we occasionally had coffee and cookies for the team there. Uh, so I guess the third conclusion is uh, rich people have the best shooting locations. Uh, I'll move on to the next project. Soda stream. Bubbly bottles everywhere. Let's watch the movie. SodaStream presents Duo, the first sparkling water maker that lets you sparkle in both plastic and glass bottles. Featuring a new sleek design built with stainless steel and high quality materials, including a new and innovative quick click feature for a quick and easy setup. Enjoy ultimate control on how you sparkle your drink with the press of a button, never ordinary, always exciting. The Duo comes with two stylish bottles for all your indoor and outdoor needs. A stylishly designed glass <coughs> carafe for a perfect dining experience. And a sleek and slim Triton durable bottle for outdoor use. SodaStream Duo compact design fits almost anywhere and comes in both black and white, so it's sure to complement your decor. SodaStream Duo the new generation of eco-friendly sparkling water. Yes, bottles. So, um, in this project we had zero simulations. Uh, we decided that it will be quicker to have a shooting day just for pouring water and uh, liquids. And uh, those two shots are the only shots that made it to the final edit. Um, and I'm going to talk about sexy bottles. So how do you do sex, a sexy bottle with bubbles? Um, I'm going to take you to an old article by Greg Zhao. Uh, he wrote about how we create bad uh, glasses of water in 3D. So the rough idea is that when you create your uh, bottle or a glass of water, uh, this is the model, for example, you get the cylinder for the liquids, and then you get this thing. 
which is wrong. You can really see the borders of the glass. And um, the way the ray light work is uh, it gets into a first uh, breaking point, gets another one into the water, a third and a fourth one. In reality, they should be unanimous. You get one entering point and then you get out. So it should look like this. So we had the same approach. We took the bottle and it looks weird. You can see the weird borders we had uh, around the bottle. And we just took the liquids inside, uh, flipped them, and then it looks more natural. And for the bubbles, we actually rendered a separate render for the bubbles. We just made a simple uh, particle system with some uh, shading tricks of uh, simple Fresnels, and uh, that's it. We just, bless you, uh, we just uh, rendered the, uh, them as cards. We uh, spliced everything together in After Effects, and we put some nose some nose on uh, the bottles, and we pasted some uh, bubble cards. That way we have uh, full control over the bubbles um, in this project. So now that we learn how to create sexy bottles, SodaStream told us that they want uh, another project. We had uh, the 70s Independence Day in Israel, so a project with lots of flags, lots of patriotism, and sexy bottles in stock footages. Um, let's watch the movie. Yeah, flags. So um, let's watch some breakdowns from this project. So uh, the first shot uh, is uh, the statue of David. And this is the original stock footage. Now we had to decide whether we manipulate the existing footage and the existing David, or we just replace it uh, with a more controllable 3, 3D model. And also the client wanted us to cover his stuff. So we decided to go with the 3D model approach. We bought it from CG Trader, I think. And we erased David from the footage. Um, and then, uh, as, uh, as usual, we just rendered something um, with uh, the bottle itself. By the way, as I mentioned before about uh, um, the flipping normals. At that, uh, at that time, we didn't have geometry nodes, so we used dynamic paint. Uh, so every time the liquid touches uh, the bottle, it flips the normals or uh, have a control over uh, the transparency of the shader. So, and this is the final shot. And to the next one, the koala shot. So again, we have the original footage, and again, we bought a 3D model of uh, koala. We created a rough uh, representation of the scene with the koala hugging the bottle uh, for the shadows and the ambient occlusions. And by the way, koalas have two thumbs on their hands. Educational. <laughs> so we have uh, the shot, we have some shadows. Uh, we photoshopped the hand uh, of the koala. Uh, the rest of the bottle was made, some highlights, some colors, and some posts. Uh, post, and this is the final shot. Uh, we uh, managed this shot easily because koalas barely move, so the pasted hand um, just worked out of the box. And to the last shot of this project, the Golden Gate. So again, we have this shot, we have the original uh, stock footage, and we had to uh, put some bottles on the bridge. So again, 
We raised a thing, bought a model, got it back, but this time with some uh, bottles, some shadows, and we wanted to bring, uh, bring back the road for realism, um, some shading and shadows, optical flares, because we can't have a project without that, and uh, some colors, and this is the final shot. Now, let's conclude this project. Uh, replacing the entire subject, this is uh, what I say about uh, deciding whether we erase the whole thing of, or uh, modify, uh, modify the uh, stock footage. Um, uh, yep. Uh, beware of your ray lights. And shooting like liquids. As I said, sometimes um, you need uh, to use uh, simulations, but I hate simulations. Um, and sometimes it's just faster and quicker to uh, have a shooting day for liquids. Um, yeah, on to the next project. Healthy IO. Turntable rooms. Let's watch the movie. Life moves at its own pace. Healthcare isn't always in sync. Healthy IO empowers people to transform minutes in their daily routine into meaningful healthcare moments. We turn the smartphone camera into a medical device, providing clinical grade results that are transmitted to a clinician instantly. to generate better healthcare outcomes across a variety of patients' needs by seeking healthcare with the speed of life. Healthy IO. Yeah. So, in this project, it uh, looks like we had a rotating stage with a static camera that shoots it all. Uh, but in reality, when we had the pitch uh, for this project, uh, we uh, couldn't find such stage, and we didn't have much time uh, until the shooting day. And uh, creating something like that from scratch was just too costly. So we explored the idea of uh, 30, 60 degrees of rails, and the camera will shoot the stage around. Now, the idea of rails wasn't the only one uh, which we explored. We also had a talk with a guy who uh, uses spider cams. Those are crazy cams with uh, networks of cables that float around. You can see those on live shows or uh, stadiums. Uh, but it wasn't steady enough for us to get this smooth uh, uh, ride around the stage. And also, for the same reason, we had a talk with um, a cameraman on roller skates, uh, but we passed for the same uh, reasons. By the way, this is an AI-generated image. I, I couldn't find something better on the web. Um, <laughs> OK, so we have uh, the perfect circle of rails. And we stumbled upon a problem that we didn't find an indoor big enough uh, to have this uh, uh, such a big rail. Um, so we had to cut it to half. Um, anyway, we searched for rails and we got this video from someone who found some rails and we had like a few days before shooting day and um, the head of the studio, uh, we will call him uh, Noam because it's his real name, um, he told them, well, guys, it looks really oval to me. It doesn't look like a semicircle. And of course, they answered, nah, it's, it's fine. It's going to be OK. So uh, whenever you hear some, someone says that, it's not going to be OK. Um, but anyway, uh, we couldn't be too choosy because, again, uh, the deadline is coming. And we started to build the whole production 
and as you can see from the video, it's a big production, lots of crewmates and uh, lots of gear, uh, even for a semicircle. So, um, to stitch together the rooms, we, we wanted to stitch uh, the rooms together um, uh, with the half rail. And um, simultaneously, we wanted to shoot one room and build the other one. Now, I'm going to show you how it's, it looks roughly. So, we have the camera covering the first room. We offset, and sorry, this is the point of view of the camera. We have the, uh, then we offset the semicircle to the other room and it covers the right room. Now, at this point, I had lots and lots of previs sent to the cameraman. Um, we used Blender to show the cameraman what's the distance of the camera. Uh, can we stitch those rooms? Can, uh, what's the radius of the rail? And uh, so dozens and dozens of previs just to get it done. Um, and at this point, I told the cameraman, it's okay, uh, we can stitch the rooms. For example, um, this is the point of view of the last one. For example, uh, those are the two, the two rooms that you've seen right now. This is the first one, this is the second one. All I have to do is to find a point where they conjure. And uh, the next problem is, of course, the overlapping of the walls. But, but that's not a problem because the fix is good old masking. Now, this is a rough representation. It was made under a minute, uh, but it's only made to get the, sorry again, get the idea that uh, we can stitch the ropes. Everything's fine. And then they told me that they want, um, yeah, this is how it looks like. They told me they want the rooms bigger. Uh, they want it to be more realistic. Let's make it feel like they live in real rooms. So I said, okay, fine, uh, we'll manage that. And then they told me that they want to split the rooms. Because they wanted uh, uh, to control the cables and lights in between the rooms uh, and uh, create a real door that can actually open. And this is a good representation of how we shoot one room and simultaneously build uh, the other one. Now, remember this guy? Well, Noam was absolutely right. It was shorter and it was oval. So we had to get the idea how we managed to uh, end this production uh, successfully. And we were at set the day before uh, the shooting day and we uh, got uh, live footages on the spot and we sent some crevices. So the idea was like that. We offset the camera, we shoot to the center of the room then I'm sending some prefaces for the cameraman to uh, get uh, the next markings, the markings of the next rail, uh, so it will look roughly like a semicircle. They put uh, from the same point the camera and continue the rest of the shooting. Um, this is how it looks like. This is the first rail. And then when we finish, uh, we start to build the next one, and in the meantime, we get some um, other shots, like uh, close-up or medium shots, and then we get another one. And because we have to stitch the same room uh, from the center, we have to tell the uh, actors to be in the same exact pose to stitch it well. So. Uh, Thank <laughs> you.
<laughs> yeah, I tried to find a, a conclusion for this project. Uh, uh, but the problem is that we, we couldn't be too choosy because the solution of the rails and those specific rails were the only thing that we had before the shooting day. But maybe the post team is crucial on set. We were the day before the shooting day and we tackled those problems because I couldn't stitch the rooms together and we didn't know why. And so, yeah, and we had to find a solution also. Uh, so be at the shooting day, guys, and girls. So on to the next project. Anxious, a music video clip with time-lapse lighting. So the premise was fairly simple. We had a singer floating over the bed inside a room with a window, with a cityscape, with a time-lapse of a night and day that uh, projects the lighting into the room. And we have a time lapse of uh, appearing and disappearing trash all over the place. Now, I'm going to show you a special cut of the clip. It's shorter, it's under a minute, because uh, it's, it's too long and we have, don't have much time. And also, uh, I switched the music because I don't want uh, to have YouTube uh, copyright infringement. So I searched in Audio Jungle for elevator. And uh, yeah, enjoy the clip. I don't want to get copyright infringement problems. This is a replacement music. I don't wanna get into trouble Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, what we had to do for this project? Create a city time lapse. Add CG trash to the footages. And also enhance dance, dust and smokes. Um, the director told us that they're going to use a special camera with a special crane that can uh, record in real time the placement in 3D space of the camera. And also he wanted to use a screen for the window, <laughs> bless you, uh, with, uh, that can parallax in real time uh, in front of the camera. So uh, uh, with, real, uh, with the Unreal Engine, with the time lapse that we create beforehand. So, in this project, we had no tracking, no green screen, and even uh, not so much lighting, uh, because uh, there's a trick we do every time we shoot the VFX. We get on set with a 360 degrees camera, and uh, because we have all those light switches that you saw, uh, it was uh, handy to have a moving HDR. Um, so, yeah, that was nice. I'm not going to talk about the wire removal, that's another topic. So the question that we can all ask is, well, what can get wrong? <laughs> well, we went uh, to see the camera. Uh, at that day, it was on uh, the set of uh, Ninja Warrior. And uh, we tried to export the data and we try with this uh, particular uh, footage. And we went back to the studio, and what we've got is this thing. So as you can see, it didn't work. And we really tried uh, to export the data properly and to combine it with the footage. Just couldn't make it. And we even tried some uh, um, Autodesk software. And uh, <laughs> st still uh, didn't get it. 
and we made a conference call with the cameraman himself uh, to ask some questions. And uh, the first uh, thing he told us was, well, guys, when you figure it out, can you please teach me? <laughs> so uh, we had a few days before shooting day, and we decided to brute uh, force it with a good old tracking. But it wasn't fun, because let's see this uh, shot. Let's say we had some trackers all over the place. Let's track. Wap. Wap. Wow. So most of them just died. And why is that? Because the light switches were just too brutal. The tracking point didn't know how to go on. So of course there were solutions, but when you have so much uh, lights, uh, light shifting, let's see, we have, this is the uh, upper view of the room. We have the right lights, we have the lamp on the table, we have the lamp on the left, we have those lights, we have a white box on the ceiling, and of course the cherry top, two spots as the sun. So it wasn't fun to track at all. And about the HDR. This is the HDR that we've got from the shooting day, which looks nice, but uh, what I learned painfully uh, through this project is that HDRs are great for one subject or for a main character. Uh, the problem is that when you have uh, stuff all over the place, in different places of the shot, and with different light conditions that switch every second, uh, it's not going to work. So how uh, did we manage to go through this project? Pain. <laughs> so let's break down uh, some shots. So we have this shot, uh, this is the original one, some uh, green screen um, and some marker removal. Uh, lots of shit lying around in CG. Then we had to uh, uh, balance the blacks and whites of the CG trash and uh, make some yellow spills where needed. And this is the final shot. And what I said before about centric subject, uh, it worked out of the box for something like this, one edge tray with some tickets. Uh, so the lighting was uh, great for that. This is the final shot. And another example, this is the piano. And although it's, uh, it covers almost uh, the, whole, uh, the whole shot, it still has one source of lighting. So, and we needed to control the keys, so we just pasted uh, CG keys on top of that. And it looked, looked nice fairly fast. And uh, buffing the dust was an easy task. We just used some uh, packages and uh, presets. By the way, uh, at this point, uh, one of the crew members uh, threw a piece of wall into the singer's face. Um, so that was not fun. Um, yeah, so I want to conclude this project. Don't trust robots. Or, and always have a guy or a girl. If the cameraman uh, don't know how to get you the data that you need, those are um, some uh, serious red flags. And custom HRs for centric subject. This, uh, this is something that I learned uh, the hard way. Uh, you need to do something else for that. So, on to a happier project, Platica. This is going to be a back-to-back, -back, two projects at uh, one price. Uh, we had the same client, Platica, and he wanted two uh, movies at the same time, a 10th anniversary for a group of games they had, and uh, another movie uh, for the final um, the, the ending of a trilogy for another game they had. So let's watch them together. And, ah, sorry. And I want to compare the two uh, leading female characters of those two projects. 
So let's, let's watch those. Happy anniversary, dear Caesar. It's been 10 years, Caesar. So sit back, relax, and let me show you how we celebrate the Caesar's way. Not a day or a week, but a month of festivities, wealth, and abundance. A path paved with treasure to a celebration like no other. Come, the road to the Empire is calling. Yeah, and now on to the next one. To the best boyfriend in the world. Nancy, um... The thing is, I don't want to be your boyfriend anymore. You don't? I want to be your husband. Detective Nancy Jones, will you marry me? Is this part of the proposal? God, no! No one messes with my future. Spoilers, it won't. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, let's talk about Fortune, the goddess of uh, Fortune. Uh, we had like dozens of designs for that character. I think the design process went uh, in between uh, four different projects for, I don't know, like a couple of years. Essentially, in uh, this specific movie, the client approved this design, which for me, it looks uh, nice. But when we sent the second project with Nancy, um, the client said, wow, this is the best character you've ever done for us. I mean, she looks way better than Fortune. And I was baffled by that. I mean, for me, she looked a bit, she looked nice, but a bit washed out, and she has some weird features. And we tried to figure out what happened. And we talked to lead sculptors and models in our industry, and they told us um, essentially uh, one thing. It was the appealing of her animation. Uh, because this is a big project, we had lots of people working in it. And of course, we have lots of different animators working on different shots. Um, there, there is a variation between the animations. And also, she sometimes looked a bit robotic. And the main thing that some, uh, one mother told me is that you can't really figure out where she's looking at, even if she's looking straight into the camera. So it's really important that her gaze is, is going to be clear. Whilst in Nancy, which was a smaller project, we had one animator working on all the shots, and the animation was uh, pretty appealing. And her eyes are always focused. If you always uh, manage to see uh, the eyes clearly. Uh, oh, and by the way, this guy, nobody cared about. Uh, I mean, he, we showed uh, this character even rendered in animation, and the client said, yeah, he looks awesome. It's like, all you need for a good approved character is a strong jawline, like, like a weird giga chad. So, <laughs> so yeah, let's, let's conclude this one. Um, Unanimous appealing animation. It seems like it's a, a simple thing, but it's not. Uh, even with stick figures, uh, you can make uh, the user feel when uh, you see the, a good animation. Um, and clear eye gaze. Um, one of the models even told me to unblur the motion blur I put on everything uh, on the eyes of the characters, because they have to be clear. So after we managed to go through those two projects, uh, we had another one with Platica and with uh, the same character. And uh, this time we had epic skies and statues. One day, uh, Noam, he told me that uh, the project is going to be with some cloud simulations. And I hate simulations. 
I don't know why should I wait for something. It's 2022. Yesterday I was in Walibi, I had the fast leg. <laughs> so he told me, he, he sent me this previs of some shots with clouds. Yeah, so what do we have here? A sea of clouds, a gate made of, out of clouds appearing from somewhere, uh, huge horses that interact with clouds, clouds. <laughs> so we managed to do that in Embergen. They have uh, some nice real-time presets. Uh, they have uh, good presets for clouds. Um, uh, most of the presets are real-time, but in this case, the clouds are still heavy. Uh, so all the time lapses you see are uh, faster. Uh, so anyway, something that we stumbled, uh, stumbled upon was that we can't create a whole scene in Emergen, a whole shot. Because uh, like with uh, different clouds and the horses and the gates all together, because then we have to upscale the resolution, and then the, computers, the computer just uh, dies, uh, and you see this sad face, and it looks like it's uh, doing some, something, but it's actually just dead. So um, we had to split it up, as always. We made some generic uh, clouds that we can populate with uh, the whole scene. And we have those duckling horses uh, going through a cloud. Uh, so we have this kind of cloud that swooshes up. And uh, then we had some special clouds uh, with a swoosh on the side. So it looks like the uh, horses go by. And um, for this shot with the hole in the clouds, uh, that was actually simpler. We just used a Boolean cylinder with some fractal noise and a, a ver vortex modifier. Now for the gate, um, we had to make it like it appears from uh, uh, downwards. So I made a um, wind strobe that uh, pushes the gate down and I wanted to make it uh, reversed in animation. Um, so it will look like this. But the problem is that Embergen is uh, physical uh, software, so we couldn't just make it like that. Uh, I had to export the uh, open VDB sequence. This is how we connect between the softwares. And uh, I didn't find online a good solution for reversing files by their numbers. So I just had to rename it manually, the whole thing. Um, yeah, I guess that if you're a software developer, it will be easier for you, but I'm not one. Huh? I, tr I tried everything. Uh, and it was just faster for me to do it than under like five minutes, so yeah. Anyway, um, so we started, uh, you can see that we started to build the scene to see what's working, uh, populate uh, the shot, uh, trying some different lights, and at this time, uh, light groups was introduced into Blender, so of course I uh, downloaded the, the build, and you know you always have as <laughs> many builds for different occasions. <laughs> so uh, we had some light groups for uh, heavy cyan and uh, direct uh, sunlight, and some uh, low red key, and some different uh, lights whatsoever, um, and we combined and. I want to show you the, uh, the final project. This is going to be the last project that uh, I'm going to talk about. So let's watch the movie. Augustus Caesar, you have arrived just in time for the festival. All Rome celebrates in your honor. Will they still remember me centuries from now? They surely will. The entertainment will continue far into the future. An entire month of new and exciting celebrations. Known forevermore as August Fest. August Fest. New features with more fun than ever before. It begins now. So, I want to. Oh, thank you. Thank you. 
you're really positive today, so that's nice. Um, I want to conclude this talk. Um, everything can go wrong. <laughs> Trust no one. <laughs> and of course, always have a stunt turtle. <laughs> Thank you.